Hello folks, welcome back to Sewing Up Sew, or welcome if you're new. My name's Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today we are doing a sew along, which we've not done for a while. And on top of that, it's one of my mate nine. So today we are going to be working on the My Handmade Wardrobe wrap skirt, which if you've not seen it before, looks like this. It's a basic wrap skirt, it's a sort of tie one. It's on my Make 9 because it's something I wanted in my wardrobe. If it goes well, I'd like a couple of them in different styles. But this one specifically is part of a larger evening wear project I want to do, where I want to make the skirt and then I got enough fabric to make a sort of slip. And then the idea is there is sort of a cord, so I can either wear sort of the slip with like a denim jacket and trainers, so sort of Sicily slip vibe, but might use, I don't know, I need it short. Um, so that it works um so possibly another sisley slip and then the wrap skirt would go on top making it a more formal evening thing that's kind of the idea but in this vlog we're going to talk about the skirt because that's the one bit i actually know what i'm doing for it so um i have this amazing it's a satin i think a satin poly blend i think because i couldn't afford proper satin um not enough people talk about that by the way when we're talking about fabrics we buy and sort of say oh don't buy poly etc buying natural fabrics is very very expensive and if you want to make something special but you just don't have the budget then buy whatever fabric you want so this is my amazing satin poly blend it's incredibly light um i don't know if you can tell how light it is it is like it looks a bit flat under the under the sort of lights in here but it's much more of a sort of deep sort of almost pinky scarlet it's beautiful I have a lot of it, it's very, you can see like how light and drapey it is. So this is going to make hopefully a beautiful wrap skirt. Um, I think I have like three or four metres of this so that I can make another dress as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is be very, very careful when we cut it out to make sure that we leave, like we cut it out in a way that it's not wasteful and that there is a lot of fabric left because there better be. Um, the skirt I have decided to make the size one, which is the smallest size in the bracket. Now, one thing I have to say here, and well, actually a couple of things I have to say here. Firstly, I have been given free access to this pattern. Um, my handmade wardrobe asked if I want to try some of their patterns and they gave me free choice and I've had my eye on the wrap skirt anyway. So I said I would do that one. Um, so this is still a sew along. It is still gonna be my completely honest thoughts but I want to be entirely open with you guys. I have been given free access to the pattern. Um, I've also popped a link below so you can get it if you would like to after the end of this vlog, if, you know, if it appeals to you. But I did get free choice of my pattern and I am going to treat this like I would treat any other sew along. So if there's any comments on instructions, etc., I will make them. As always, I will be as pos- like as, uh, what's the word? Oh, sorry, it's Saturday morning, I'm so tired impartial as possible the other thing to let you know on that note is that my handmade wardrobe are currently updating all of their pattern instructions for pdfs because they're based currently on you having the sizing on um on the pattern envelope so currently in the pdf there is no size block so which is kind of frustrating but i did message and they've sent it to me straight away it is on the website and all their instructions are being updated but just as an fyi in case you also have the pattern that is why um but they sent it over so i'm making a size one which is a 26 inch waist and a 35 inch hip which is pretty much me now the size two was a 28 and a 38 i want to say something like that and there's the finished garment measurements have half an inch basically in them. So half an inch of ease. Now I'm hoping the size one will be fine. So 26 and a half, because obviously my waist can go to 27 if I'm bloated or whatever, but it is a tie wrap skirt. So really it shouldn't actually matter because I should be able to adjust it. Um, but I, I'm slightly nervous, but I've gone with the size one, hoping it will work. The other thing I would say is I'm gonna get the pattern pieces out. Hold on. I cut them out yesterday because I needed like a, sorry, not the, of the fabric. I cut the paper out yesterday so that I could just dive straight into sewing. I'm trying to do stuff like that so it's easier for me to just sew when I want to sew. So this is the length of the pattern. If I hold it up, sort of, this is the waist and this is the end. So it's actually going to be quite long on me um, and probably longer, much longer than it looks in the pattern image. 
so we will see i don't mind this one being longer because the purpose of it is to be more of an evening vibe but if i make it and it's too long like you know if i want one want another one in like a more daytime fabric i might shorten it so it's more like the mid mid calf length it's meant to be but i think on this on me this is probably going to be quite close to full length um but i'm going i'm because it doesn't matter if it's longer and more formal that's fine we're just going to go with it and we're going to see what happens um on this project as well because i am using a very very lightweight fabric I need to test iron a bit of it to see how it's going to work but in terms of finishing i kind of want to do french seams because i think that's going to just just be a lot nicer all around i do have a pressing cloth so it might be a case that i can iron it low with a cloth on top so we'll try that um but there are there are some challenges working with fabrics like this and one of them is if they're a poly blend they might melt if you iron them so we're going we're going to explore that we're going to see how we go it's a really simple pattern. The back piece is on a fold. The front is one curve and the other curve, it's almost like a petal. And then there are, uh, there is, uh, sorry, there is a back waistband, which it wants you to interface. I don't think I am gonna interface mine um, because again, I want it nice and light. And I think I don't have any interfacing at the moment that is light enough to not make it weirdly cardboardy because the fabric is so thin. Um, but I think that will be fine. To be honest i think it'll be okay i don't interface a lot of things um mainly because i'm too lazy to buy it <laughs> what happens is every like six months or so i buy a lot of interfacing so i don't have to think about it or if it's like my blazer for example required like three or four different types of interfacing and i was like okay right i will actually i will be good i will listen i will get the things you're telling me to get but normally i just have a lightweight, a stretch and a heavyweight interfacing in the house and I just use them. Currently I don't have anything so you know we're where we are but I'm sure it'll be fine. So we have a back line and then two ties so I will talk through the construction a little bit more, I'll talk through the fit, all that kind of stuff when we get there. Um, One thing I'm trying to do more, although I'm quite bad at it, is tell you what I'm wearing with me made in this video. Um, Top and Cardi are ready to wear but my True Buyers Hudson Pants are making their regular um, regular entrance into my weekend. Uh, I wear them all the time. They're so comfortable and I am I am seriously considering another one. So I've got them and the sweatshirting I used for them is from Aurea Textiles. And the little tie stuff, just because a lot of people struggle to find this. This was actually Prim that I got in my local haberdashery. So Prim do like lengths of it for pyjamas, but it's weirdly hard to find. So if you are struggling, Prim do do it. So it's just having a look at stockists. I think that, so my local fabric shop do it, but they're not online. Um, or William G will do it. Uh, J Cotts, where I get the majority of my zips and thread from, they definitely do it. Um, so it is possible because that was when I was trying to make these true bias hats and pants. Oh my God, I couldn't find it anyway. Anyway, digression. Let's cut out the fabric and do some sewing. Um, we have project bag with excess fabric, which there is lots of, that's good. We have our pattern pieces here. So we have in total, um, well, technically five, but four pieces. So we have the front of our skirt, of which there is two. This is our technically five. Um, so the front of our skirt, petal each way, so it wraps over. We have either a waistband or straps, whichever one this is. So I'm losing my voice now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, What's that? That's the ties for the skirt. The waistbands, which I have a question on, um, and the back of the skirt, which is cut and pulled. So it should be nice and simple. I'm going to get the instructions up in a sec. But <coughs> my first question is, I feel like there should be three waistbands because there's, there's three bits. But then potentially the ties form the front of both panels and there's a waistband just for the back, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to have a look at the instructions in a sec, but it's my first question. Otherwise, it looks like a nice, delicate sew. So what I have done is I've put some red thread on the machine 
and I have got a 70 weight needle in which is a nice light sharp one <coughs> I might swap it down to like a 60 or a 50 um I've got both so we'll see what it needs but I think I think is it a 60 it's a 70 or a 60 I've got on it's a, it's a nice little lightweight one so we'll see how it does um I know I talked about French seams I think I am gonna have a go at um I think I am gonna have a go at French seams to be honest I'm gonna read the instructions first but I just don't want to try and finish this fabric without actually ugh, I don't want to finish it with an overlocker or something because it'll still it's it's still gonna fray even in overlocker finishing so I think French seams is the way to go I'm gonna test iron a little bit of it to see to make sure it's well if is it ironable I don't know we'll find that out in a sec and then we will we will crack on so realistically it's front on to back front on to back one large skirt piece and then it's just the tops and then it's hemming so hemming around the curve is going to be fun that's going to be where my lovely rolled hem foot comes into play I think and a lot of patience but I'm hoping I should be done in a couple of hours at most I, I reckon I'll be done in the next hour because it's nice and quick and then I can talk to you guys a little bit once I see the fit I can talk a little bit about what I'm thinking for its companion curled piece so let's get cracking. So that's one side done. Um, one thing I've realised is that, oh, that's a little bit of water that leaks from the iron, um, is that I've accidentally cut the back piece too long. That's fine because I've double checked both the front pieces are the right length. So once I've got the other side in place, I will just trim it so the whole skirt's the correct curve. That's no bother, it's fine. Um, but we've got one side on and I have done French seams which actually I looked at the pattern again, it does tell you to do in the instructions. So this pattern is made to do with French seams. I've probably not done this side as carefully as I could have. Um, I am making a conscious decision not to do a French seam tutorial in this because I don't think I have the space. And like, if I had a big sewing table, I'd be much more able to show you what I mean. Like I can talk through it, but I can't do a full tutorial just because it probably won't do it justice. But basically, the one thing I will say about French seams is that they are something a lot of people are scared of and you really don't need to be, they're very easy. All you have to remember is that if you start wrong sides together, it feels so wrong, honestly. Like, it feels insanely wrong, but just crack on and do it anyway. Um, I tend to, if the seam allowance is one and a half centimetres, I tend to ignore whatever it says in the pattern of what to do, you know, do this seam this width I always do one centimeter wrong side to wrong side snip it trim it all the way down flip it through and then I use the quarter inch marker on the foot plate so like literally if I show you the foot it's the mark is actually on the metal plate but it's basically in line with this little line here or like the inside edge that's the line I use and then I get a nice neat little seam finish on the inside I, I'm a big fan of French seams I have now also established this fabric can be ironed just on the lowest setting of my iron. So my second round of French seams will be a lot neater. Um, and that water, it is only water, so it will dry. Even if right now it looks like a stain, it won't be. It's just very, very thin fabric. So it looks a lot worse than it is. So let's get the other side on. And then we will have most of our skirt. I will film I'll do a time lapse of how I trim the bottom. I should say I'm not gonna, it sounds really bad. I'm gonna do it by eye. I do everything by eye and it works out fine. So I'm just gonna do the curve by eye. I'll fold the skirt in half, make sure I cut exactly the same on both sides and then it'll be nice. But actually, to be honest, 
even if this piece, the back piece is meant to be that length and the front piece has come out shorter on me, that works better anyway. So I'm just gonna go with it. So let's pop our other side on and then we've got a skirt. Um, I am just finishing off the last bits this morning. So yesterday we got to the point where we have a skirt. Let me pull this skirt out. Uh, the hems at the side are rolling a little bit because the fabric is very, very lightweight. So I think they'll just settle, to be honest. I'll keep pressing them, but we have a skirt. So I hold it up and there you can see. We have a raw edge at the top. Um, now we have basically got two steps left. Let me cut that thread while I think about it. Um, Step one is to make our ties and turn them through. And then step two is to make our waistband. Now the waistband instructions are somewhat eluding me this morning because I'm quite tired. So I'm gonna do the ties first. Um, and that is the standard, here is a long tube, right sides together, stitch it long, snip it, turn it through. We'll do that twice. And then we'll talk about the waistband together when my brain is sort of, um, I've got the instructions here, hence why there's a bit of light on my face. And I'm sort of with them and then suddenly I'm not. <laughs> like I'm, I'm sort of fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then it's really unclear. I think one thing that would really help is the photos in the instructions are not arranged in a way that, that helps, I would say. They're sort of dotted around, but it makes it, it makes it quite confusing. If anything, it would be better if the instructions were smaller and there were bullet points um because there's they're, they're quite big blocks of text and i'm finding that quite hard to process and i know i'm not the only one there um so we will we will see how this goes oh yeah i don't know i'm i'm reading it through and it's just i don't do you know what it is i don't think the photos are as demonstrative as they think they are like one of them is and then the next one just isn't it's it's almost like they need one in between or they just need to bullet point those instructions and break them down a little more, I think, maybe. But anyway, let's make the ties first and then we'll get there. step we have two lovely ties i have top stitched them down just to make my life easier when i'm using them and to make them look a bit nicer now the waistband so i'm not interfacing it because this fabric a it won't interface i have checked it won't um it doesn't also press so this is going to be really fun um what we're gonna do is i thought it would be a classic sort of interface one half put the same you know that sort of style but no it does answer my question from earlier though. So what we do is remove the paper wrapping piece and we're actually gonna stick them together at the short end, which is interesting. And then we have one, one very long waistband, which makes a lot more sense actually. So the first thing we're gonna do is sew these together at the short end. And this is where we discover yet again, I'm not very good at cutting um, flimsy fabrics. Mm, yeah, that'll do, that'll be fine. Um, so we're gonna join them together there. <laughs> It then wants me to press the seam allowance up. That's not gonna happen because it doesn't press. Um, and then we have to, now I'm going to open the laptop again. <sighs> so with right sides facing, starting from the right hand opening edge of the skirt, working to the left, we align the non-folded edge of the waistband, so top end, um, with, 
with the front skirt and we basically we sew it in we sew it all in leaving an overlap i think so it's hard because it doesn't actually say oh no leave one and a half centimeters of the waistband protruding out over the opening edge of the front skirt at both okay i think one of my issues with this with this pattern is the instructions are not very clear um and the thing is it's a very simple make and it's it's a gorgeous pattern i like the way it's been drafted but the instructions need some work um it is it's hard to say front skirt when at this point the skirt you're working with is just one big piece and also there's there's two sides so you need to say at the right opening through to the left opening or like something slightly more descriptive shall we say um and then we align the back seam with the notch pin and sew so first of all let's sew the short edge of the waistband together open it out and then we're going to stitch it all along the skirt hoping i've cut it the right length because honestly cutting this fabric was so annoying i need some of those metal like the ring pattern weights i think to deal with fabric like this and i just need to spread them out everywhere to make my life a lot easier um, and also, I need a big A0, ideally I need a big cutting table, don't we all, um, to cut this kind of fabric on, because ideally I'd use my rotary cutter, but I can't, it's so annoying, my cutting board is uh, A1, maybe, a, A2, A1, but it's hard, I'd have to get it under and then move it to do a whole piece, which is so frustrating, so that's not going to happen, um, but yeah, ideally, this is the kind of fabric I would be doing with my rotary cutter. And I do need to find a way to do that because doing it with scissors has led to it being slightly inaccurate because when the fabric lifts, when you cut it, there we are. Anyway, um, so we're going to do that first. And then with the wrong side of the skirt facing up at the right hand opening edge. Okay. I think my, my next question is, if we've got the wrong side of the skirt up at the right hand opening edge, is that right as if I was wearing it, would it be my right? Or is it my right as I'm looking at it? Is it sort of skirt right, like stay right? <laughs> or is it like, what, what am I looking at? Um, fold the waistband so the right sides are together, so the protruding seam allowance is together. Oh, I see. No, no, I don't. No, I don't, because I thought we'd be threading the ties in. Attach the second tie to the waistband by laying out the waistband so the finished edge is faced towards the back of the skirt. The small seam allowance lays on the front waistband. The raw edge should align with the skirt seam. Oh, that's so unclear. I think part of the problem is as well, they used a pattern fabric for the demonstration and it's so difficult to see what they actually want us to do. Um, because right now it just looks like I'm just putting the stitches on on top rather than as I would assume folding them in. Um, attach the second tie to the waistband by laying it on the waistband so the finished edge faces towards the back of the skirt. A small seam allowance lays on the front waistband. The raw edge should align with the skirt side seam. Stitch in place aligning with the stitching side seam. Trim the seam allowance, flip the tie towards the front of the skirt. So yeah, like, I'm, I feel a bit weird about this because then we're basically putting on the waistband as one continuous piece and then we're just putting this on folding it and top stitching so it's it's almost like box stitched just on from the outside but that's the second tie make a buttonhole in the waistband at the end opposite to the tie so then it wants me to do a button as well which i don't think is going to work with this fabric so it wants me to put the right tie into the waistband so as we're folding it in that goes in and so we have one tie coming out of the skirt the other tie will go attached to the outside so you can tie it but it's not we then have a button scenario on the inside but i think one of my struggles with this is where am i putting my button uh, make a buttonhole in the waistband at the opposite tie uh, opposite end to the tie try the skirt on mark the position of your button on the inside of the front waistband near the skirt seam right so Okay, demystifying the instructions. We have, if we hold up our skirt, need it the right way up there. Uh, where are we? There we go. So, we have a skirt. Here we go. So, this is the skirt facing you is the wrong side, as you guess from the French scenes. Now, 
this is the right hand side as I wear it. So this side is going to get the waistband and I think it wants me to wrap it left over right, but I don't want to do that because, hang on, which side's finished nicer? I'm going to, whichever side's finished nicer is going in front. Um, yeah, so the right side's going to have to go over the left because it's just nicer. Um, so what I'm going to do is when I do my waistband, this tie is going to go into the waistband and it will then be a continuous line from the waistband to the tie like so, it will be attached. I think the problem is, normally when you do this, you'd have like a little button tab on the inside of the skirt and then button hole here to put it on. But really, with that, the button will go straight on the waistband, but there's no real give in that, which I don't necessarily think is ideal. I get, right, I get where the ties go now. I get one tie here and the other tie will go in line with the side seam here. That's fine. Know where those are going. The question of the button we will resolve once the waistband is on and I'm hoping is clearer and I can try it on and it will make more sense. the skirt which is the important bit so we have a skirt it desperately needs a press you can see how floaty it is and the fact it will definitely need a smaller dress underneath so it isn't fully see-through um and i am in my clothes for ballet so bear with me now we've got our ties waistband on ties on so i can now explain this fully this is my right this is my left the left side will go over there will be a button and um no there'll be a buttonhole on this bit of the skirt. There will be a button on this bit of the skirt. So imagine that's gonna to go together. I'm gonna to put that on when I get back from ballet. And then the skirt comes round. The other ties are attached here at the side. And we're going to tie it up, beautiful. My front hem's got a bit lettucey, but that's fine. We can smooth that out. Bit of water, bit of pressing. And we do have a skirt. So if I come a bit closer, so our tie's here, one's attached there, one's on the end of the skirt. So all we need to do is pop a wee button there on the inside of the skirt, buttonhole here, bish bash, done. And we have a beautiful wrap skirt. Now I love the way this has been drafted, I love the length, I love that it's a true wrap skirt. The instructions, I don't know if I found them challenging because I'm tired, or if they are challenging, it, I would really appreciate it actually. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm just gonna leave this in because my camera's being annoying. Um, I really appreciate it if you have made this and you found the instructions confusing. Can you let me know in the comments? Um, because I don't know if I'm just exhausted and it didn't go in or if or if there is some clarity needed, but then I'm, I'm quite good at instructions normally. Like I don't read them very often, but when I do, it's because I need them. Um, and for me, they were unclear. So yeah, let me know if you had similar issues. And then when I go back from ballet in an hour, I will pop the button on, edit this up and it will go live. So if you're watching this tonight, hello. Um, I was going to beat myself up a little bit because, you know, I wasn't finished, I have to go to ballet and everything. I, I like vlogging and I like going to ballet. So it's gonna be delayed by an hour. The YouTube algorithm can deal with it. Um, but I'm really excited to share this with you guys and get to do both of my hobbies this evening. So have a lovely Monday night. Um, I'll be back from ballet shortly and probably with wet hair, show you what this skirt looks like. Well, we're gonna choose a button first and then we will have a proper look at this skirt without leggings or trackies on underneath so we can actually see what the fit's like. Um, but I'll see you shortly. So 
so on the premise that my hair is wet and I've just come back from ballet, um, I am going to show you the skirt without necessarily showing you all of me. Um, I'm a really big fan, so I've kept my pajama bottoms on underneath so I can show you the finished product. Uh, so we have our nice ties there, and then if we undo it, there we go. So the button is on the skirt side here, so it's secured there. Buttonhole in the main bit. Slightly concerned that buttonhole's going to rip at some point um, because I probably should have done it a different way to how I did it, but we're all right actually. It's a nice fit, it needs a press as silky things often do, but there we go. See how floaty that is? So while making this, I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to make the top of the Sicily slip dress, I think. Oh, she says, saying I think again. No, I'm not. I'm going to make the top of the Jessica slip dress because I prefer the amount of bust room. And I'm going to make it as like a mini dress, so literally to like there. So that way if this skirt flaps open, then there's still a good amount of dress. But I think a cowl neck would look really pretty then with this tied across. But the other thing is I can see this skirt coming on holiday with me, you know, with like a big white shirt. And like, you know, I can see me wearing it with a jumper so that, you know, sort of smart casual. I can see it winter, summer, Christmas. Like it's so comfortable, it's so light. I love the color, I love the flow, I can't stop twirling. So all in all, I think a success. So thank you so much for watching folks. Um, As a roundup, this is one of my make nine. So would I recommend this pattern? Absolutely, it's a great pattern, it is pretty easy. Um, it's a great beginner one. I think if my brain had been in a better place this weekend, I could have sewn this a couple of hours, like it would have been very speedy. Um, I think my own tiredness has led to this being slightly more complex than it probably should have been. But I'm a really big fan and I am definitely going to make another one. I'm thinking of the fabric though, because the one thing I would say is although I adore my silky version, it's absolutely beautiful, like ridiculously beautiful um it's, it's a hard pattern to make if you can't crease your fabric <laughs> that's what i will say um it might benefit from a fabric with slightly more structure at least if it's your first one i love this i'm so glad i made it i think one of my favorite things about this so far is also that it it was an idea i had ages ago to be like oh skirt and top like skirt and mini dress combo and then i've got cute little red satin mini dress that I can wear with like a denim jacket and trainers in the summer and look really cute or I can dress it up for one of the many weddings we're going to over the next two years and it's sort of I don't know I just thought I'd get more use out of a skirt and a mini dress than I would one big red silky evening dress so I am utterly delighted with this I would absolutely recommend the pattern yes the instructions need work the instruction booklet does need work but the pattern itself is gorgeous I would 100% recommend it. Um, I have linked it below. I am really, really grateful to my handmade wardrobe team for letting me try it for free. Thank you so much, guys. I have had a great time. Um, and the thing is that, like, this is one of those skirts that you can really elevate. So you can absolutely, as like an early project, stable cotton, bang one out, beautiful. But I can see like making this skirt in floaty viscoses. I can see it in linen for a more structured look. I, you know, there is endless possibilities with this and I just think it's absolutely stunning. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for watching me sort of um and ah so much. Um, it's been a while since I've done a sew along and that is because they take a lot of brain power and a lot of weekend time, neither of which I've had very much of recently. But this was so fun. It was nice getting back in the sew along seat. Um, I have got another sew along coming at the end of March for another one of my make nine. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and all the remains to say is thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.